Anyway, uh, Zag was a, a very, very interesting company, especially given the um, high-tech focus of Israeli companies. There are very few Israeli um, consumer goods companies who have made it um, worldwide. And uh, Tag was con competing with a huge American company called Rubbermaid, and they beat them in many of their products. Our next uh, speaker is um, more typical to the high-tech scenery. Um, this is Ofer Shoshan, who was a uh, founder and CEO of a company at the age of 23, when he was out of the army. Um, he worked and consulted for Checkpoint in security. He was uh, vice president at another security company. Um, he uh, founded and managed a company called um, Clusters that was a um, storage company. He did an MBA at INSEAD, a short MBA, 10 months. And he is now uh, one of the founders and the CEO of a company called One Hour Translation. Ofer, will you please uh, take it from here? Ofer will speak about why entrepreneurs don't go to business schools. Welcome to Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest are uh, half entrepreneurs. So um, I'll tell you, I'm not sweet. Uh, I'll tell you um, uh, my story uh, also uh, with the MBA angle, which I eventually did get. And then uh, the story of um, a one hour translation. Uh, and, um, and maybe the company I did uh, after I left the, the military. Um, so uh, when uh, in Israel you have compulsory military service and uh, I finished that I was uh, 23 and actually I was I was uh, really planning to go to uh, university um, and then a friend of mine who was a medical doctor uh, came to me and said uh, you know my father his father is a cardiology professor uh, my father uh, has uh, this idea about uh, uh, some uh, life-saving device. And, um, and uh, what do you think about it? And I told him, oh, sounds very interesting. Uh, let's start a company. Now, I didn't know anything about cardiology, uh, medical devices, medical market, heart diseases. And uh, to say the truth, if I knew, I wouldn't have come near this field. Um, and, uh, and we started a company, and then, <clears throat> and then I started um, learning about, um, uh, I didn't know anything, okay? I was like uh, fresh out of the military, I knew nothing. Uh, I started learning about the subject, and then I realized we should uh, issue a patent, because I heard people say that, you know, patents are important. So uh, I didn't know anything about patents. I went uh, to the, uh, the law school of Tel Aviv University, the building next door. I went there, I sat there in the library for two days, and I read about patents. When I thought I, I understood, like, the general direction, then uh, we went out and we issued a patent, and uh, if you search Google, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, there, it's uh, still there. Um, so um, uh, I issued a patent about this device, and the idea was uh, it, it was a device that non-invasively could tell you the risk of dying of heart attack with a very simple uh, measurement, and the, the alternative measurement, yeah, see that I'm not uh, <laughs> bluffing? <laughs> check, check, Google patents. <laughs> Uh, and uh, a very simple uh, measurement, and th the alternative was to uh, do like an open heart surgery, and no one would do it unless you really needed an open heart surgery. And, uh, and with this device, you could actually uh, uh, tell uh, uh, if there's a risk of dying from heart attack and then take preventive measures. Um, so uh, we did that. There was uh, the um, a VC industry in Israel at the time uh, was just beginning. There was Yozma and maybe uh, one few uh, uh, other, one, one or two other funds. 
Uh, so we, we couldn't, uh, you know, find any financing uh, in Israel. And, and uh, Tzvi, Tzvi was uh, talking about luck, and I, I must agree. And by the way, this is also statistically true, because if you look at surveys between entrepreneurs, and you ask them what is the, the most important factor uh, of success, 40% will say luck, which is way uh, ahead of any other factor. Brains, money, uh, whatever you like. Timing. Timing, timing sometimes is a form of luck. So, yes, but you should be prepared when, <clears throat> when luck comes. Uh, as they say, like luck goes with the good. So you, you need to do and act. So, you know, you don't see the home. You have to work hard. So um, we, we somehow got to the people, um, a, a fund in uh, Switzerland uh, that managed the money of uh, Carl Gustav, the king of uh, Sweden. Okay, and, um, and they, uh, they knew the professor somehow from, from the past and we presented the, the patent and the company to them and they said, wow, that's very interesting. And they gave us some money. It was a, a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, today, I think uh, Ed will agree, no one in his right mind will start a medical device company without like $10 million or, or something like that. Uh, but uh, uh, like I said, I didn't know anything. So uh, uh, we already had something and uh, some, a few engineer uh, friends uh, worked like uh, practically free and another software developer worked uh, for equity, and uh, uh, somehow we managed to build a device, and uh, you know, cardio cardiological device, th this was like a PC with a pressure cuff and ECG, and it connected to Echo Doppler, and uh, it was connected to the, you know, the electric uh, socket on, on one side, and to a heart patient on the other side. So from a, a, a safety perspective, there are many measures uh, you, know, you need to take before you can uh, uh, connect a heart patient uh, to the wall and, uh, and expect him to survive. And we, do it, we did all sorts of nice things there, uh, optic coupling and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, so uh, we, we actually managed to build uh, three generations of um, of this device and uh, it was used in um, uh, the UK, in Germany and in Israel. Uh, we did some um, uh, uh, experiments with the Roche and uh, eventually we sold it, not for a lot of money, but for uh, uh, some fund, uh, Pyrotech. Um, because, you know, in order to uh, make it big, we, we, at some point I realized that uh, it will require a lot of money and then uh, we had the opportunity uh, uh, to sell it and we sold it. Uh, but um, uh, uh, the point is, uh, you know, um, uh, and uh, Tzvi mentioned that as well, um, the, the entrepreneurs, I guess, they just uh, do. They don't uh, talk about it or think about it. Uh, you do, and when you do, you, you make mistakes, and uh, uh, that's how you learn, but uh, uh, usually it's always uh, somehow for the better. Uh, I think that even uh, Steve Jobs, you know, at the end of the day, you look at the, at the bottom line and the, the end result. So uh, even if you have some local uh, drops, uh, the question is, uh, where do you get to uh, uh, at the end? Uh, that's, uh, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Um, so after that, uh, I did a few other companies, and then I, I heard about uh, INSEAD. Uh, do, do you know, who knows about INSEAD here? Okay, that, that's good. So for those, I didn't know about it, and actually I think that the first person I learned about INSEAD from was uh, Ella. Uh, um, because I got to the MIT forum with Cortec, the cardiological company, and, uh, and uh, Ella uh, consulted me there and uh, later recruited me to, to the forum. 
Uh, so uh, the uh, INSEAD is a, a, a nice uh, European uh, business school, uh, considered among the top uh, five, ten, whatever in the world. And um, the, the nice thing uh, about them, which was uh, appealing to me, uh, was the fact that every year they accept uh, one or two students with no academic background. Okay, now, um, it didn't bother me that much that I didn't have, a, you know, an academic degree, but uh, uh, my mom was bothering me a lot. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you should study, you should study. And, uh, and, uh, and then I heard about INSEAD and I said, okay, uh, the deal is that, uh, you know, you need to go for, to school for a year, but then uh, you get an MBA, so instead of spending like three or four years in uh, undergrad school and then uh, do an MBA uh, another year or two, with one year you finish the whole thing. So that sounded uh, like a, a good deal. And um, I, I decided to, to give it a, a try. And, uh, and uh, the project of getting into INSEAD, I guess, was almost as, uh, as hard as uh, going through it. Uh, because it is, uh, it is quite intensive. It's a one-year program or even 10 months, effectively. But um, you, you land running and, uh, and uh, there are no, like, uh, you are studying now. So the first, uh, the first lesson is not uh, what are we going to talk about. Uh, you have uh, cold calls uh, right from the start and... Uh, uh, and it's like that, and the exams week is, uh, you know, five days, uh, two exams every day, morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon. Uh, so I, I actually, I uh, managed to do that, and, uh, and that was um, uh, pretty nice uh, because, uh, um, first of all, it's a, a very nice experience. So those of you who don't have an MBA and, and consider uh, uh, getting uh, one, um, I highly recommend. Um, at INSEAD, you have like a free, in, in my time, there were like 300, 350 uh, students from 70 different countries. And uh, you're basically stuck in the forest south of Paris. And uh, there's nothing, you know, nothing to do there. And so, so the students uh, entertain themselves. Every week uh, you have uh, uh, every week uh, different countries in charge of the the weekly uh, parties. Uh, so you have Israel week, Germany week, uh, uh, you know UK week, and so forth. And um, and since the, the there is no you know no one country has the the, the majority of students. You have. Uh, uh, it's pretty even, the, the distribution between the different regions. So um, uh, the experience is very nice. And until today, I have friends from Iceland uh, to Japan and many of the countries uh, in the middle, including, uh, you know, uh, uh, Syria and Egypt and Lebanon and some countries that are not necessarily very friendly uh, with Israel. <coughs> And since they knew, and when I was there, and they, they knew I was an officer in the military, we all, they were always joking about, uh, about that as well. But um, uh, uh, so the, the experience of learning there is, uh, is very nice. And, and like I said, um, you get it done uh, with a year. And during <coughs> one interesting thing, um, and this is uh, the topic of the lecture, I don't know how many students you have in, in your uh, MBA? Now it's about 3,000. Okay. And oh, 1,000, sorry. The whole business school is about three or 4,000, 1,000. And how many of them are, are uh, in entrepreneurship courses or, you know? Uh, only about 100 or so. Ah, okay. So in, uh, in, uh, when, when I was at INSEAD, we had like 300 students. And uh, I guess that at least 50 of them 
uh, uh, were uh, saying that uh, this is like uh, around 16 percent, 17 percent, were saying that uh, they want to be entrepreneurs and went to the entrepreneurship classes and were talking about uh, uh, ideas and, and stuff like that. At the end of the day, uh, I was at uh, INSEAD when I finished. Uh, it was uh, after the bubble burst and um, uh, the, the market was dead, dead. And um, so at the end of the day, uh, only uh, Bart and myself uh, started uh, our own companies. Um, out of the 50 something people that uh, said uh, uh, they want to do it so, uh, and starting a company at that environment wasn't easy. That, that's a, a whole story by itself. You'll have time, so maybe I'll get to that. Uh, <clears throat> so my point is, um, you know, if if um, if you want to do uh, uh, um, if you want to uh, uh, do something, you should probably just uh, do it, and. Um, uh, Uh, you should probably just uh, uh, do it, and uh, and sometimes uh, it's hard. But uh, if you keep uh, keep it up, uh, then uh, uh, you you succeed. Um, okay. And that's uh, and then uh, after uh, INSEAD, like I said, the. Uh, I came, I was, uh, all, you know, I had job offers from uh, two consulting companies, uh, from Bertelsmann, and from two uh, VCs. Uh, and uh, I was uh, very close of uh, signing, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, entering as a, as a, uh, into one of the VC funds uh, uh, here in Israel. And then, um, I said, you know, I, I was supposed to give back the agreement, and then I said, no, I, I have to start uh, my company. That, that was an idea that I was working on uh, at INSEAD. Now, <clears throat> the time was, <clears throat> there were no investments, okay? It was like a nuclear winter. Uh, and I was living then in the south of Israel and was uh, going around the, the country uh, meeting VCs. Uh, VCs, even if they don't invest, they will gladly meet you. And uh, meeting around with inv potential investors, uh, trying to uh, uh, get, uh, get them to invest uh, uh, in this uh, uh, idea. Uh, and after uh, like three months of uh, running around, uh, I actually managed to uh, get a term sheet. And um, uh, then uh, uh, the terms were uh, uh, actually nice. It was a um, uh, six million dollars investment on uh, on uh, PowerPoint slides and and uh, uh, free guys, okay, and uh, with bridge loan and on you know on signing the term sheet and everything, and then my partners. Um, said, uh, you know, they didn't agree to the VC terms because of the dilution and this and that. Uh, and we partnered, we parted, uh, you know, uh, we parted uh, uh, not as friends. Um, uh, eventually, by the way, this company did start and uh, today it's very, very successful. Uh, and uh, I, I ended up uh, being entrepreneur in residence in uh, Israel Seed Partners, uh, one of the VC funds uh, that was uh, active here in Israel. Uh, and uh, then I, I started Clusters, which is a whole uh, story by, by itself. Um, so, uh, you know, if, uh, if you want to do and you persevere, uh, then uh, uh, you get to do it, and uh, the value of the MBA for me uh, it was um, it put you know uh, if you do something uh, practically uh, without the theoretical uh, knowledge and background, uh, and then uh, and then uh, you get the background, it helps. 
I guess that the two things that uh, helped the most was, um, or the one thing that helped the most was uh, uh, all the, the financial, um, uh, you know, uh, courses. So uh, finance and accounting and uh, uh, these things because uh, the language of business is numbers and, and uh, you need to know uh, how to read a financial report and how to prepare one and, uh, and uh, uh, deal with these things. Uh, and the other thing was the, the network and the contacts. And uh, obviously it was fun also, like uh, being there and uh, my mom was happy. And uh, um, the, the Prince of Holland was in the class with me. So the queen came to the graduation. So overall it was, uh, was very nice. Um, but uh, in terms of, um, many people uh, take their MBA uh, in order to improve their salary or, uh, you know, uh, get a return on investment, etc. Uh, I guess for, uh, for many it works. Uh, I guess it depends uh, what you did before and what you're doing after and where you go to school, uh, which is uh, uh, also true. Um, and then uh, uh, clusters, uh, I won't go into the, the story because it will take more than an hour. Um, uh, but with clusters, uh, we, I raised uh, a lot of money from uh, uh, VCs. I, I raised uh, something like uh, uh, 33, 34 million dollars uh, in few rounds. Uh, from Benchmark uh, US and Charles River Ventures and uh, a few other VCs, um, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, great uh, firms. Uh, but um, um, uh, after, uh, 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 after understanding uh, how it works, uh, I actually uh, decided, uh, and uh, uh, when I left Clusters, uh, I decided uh, uh, that my next company uh, will be without uh, an investment. And, uh, and uh, I was looking for something where uh, uh, Clusters was doing enterprise software. So, you know, this is a software that you sell to big companies for a lot of money. Uh, on average, each sale was like a million dollars. Uh, we worked with Morgan Stanley and Credit Suisse and Mary Lynch and Cisco and Sprint and companies like that, and network appliance, uh, EMC, and so forth. Um, and every sale was huge, but uh, it was a long process and uh, 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 very hard and difficult. And I said that uh, I want to do a company where uh, I can sell uh, a lot and quickly. Um, it's fun to, those of you who like selling and know that it's, uh, it's really uh, fun. Who was a salesperson here? Schnetzer de Kimbes, no? <laughs> so those of you who like selling, by the way, I think that uh, every entrepreneur should be a salesman, okay? <laughs> you, you need to sell, you sell uh, whatever you are selling, uh, you sell to your customers, to your partners, to your employees, to your uh, wife or girlfriend. Uh, or ex-wife, and uh, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, you're always uh, selling something to someone, and... Uh, you start when you have a wife, then you sell Yeah, that, that's true. Um, and, uh, but I'm not as an ex expert as Tzvi, I only have one ex-wife. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> But I have less gray hair. I have less hair, but less gray hair. So um, if you like selling, then um, you like the, you know, the adrenaline of getting a PO, of closing a deal, of uh, getting, getting someone uh, to like your product and say, I'm willing to uh, pay money for this. And one of the nice things uh, about One Hour Translation, this thing connected to the internet? One of the, the nice things about uh, uh, one hour translation is uh, and I'll tell you about it in a second more. 
Um, is the fact that uh, this is a non-hidden commercial. If any of you <laughs> needs professional translation services, you're invited. Uh, is the fact that um, uh, uh, we have, you know, almost on a daily basis, uh, uh, companies, businesses that come to the website and spend uh, sometimes thousands of dollars without even speaking with us. Okay, they, they come to the site, uh, they see the service and uh, uh, they buy and, um, and it's great uh, uh, to see. And um, yes, that's another conversion trick. Um, so then I thought, you know, I really wanted to start a company where uh, I don't need a lot of money. Enterprise software companies uh, also require like between five and ten million dollars uh, to uh, really, you know, start, uh, get their product and uh, uh, go to customers uh, and uh, not die along the way. And um, so I looked for a company where um, you can uh, sell quickly, you don't need a lot of infrastructure, uh, you do not need uh, a lot of capital uh, to start it. Uh, and then uh, I was uh, uh, a volunteer lecturer like uh, today in one of Ella's courses uh, here in Tel Aviv University. And uh, one of the students came to me and said, uh, me and my friends have an idea um, uh, to uh, do a, a translation service uh, online. Now, uh, translation services or translation agencies, any of you use the translation agency? Before, okay. So, translation agencies traditionally, um, they're not really online, even if they have a website. You, you go, they give you a quote, uh, it may take a few days. Um, uh, those who are really fast tell you that they will give you the quote in a few hours. And um, then they take the material and they look for a translator and they translate it. You don't know what's going on and uh, eventually you, you get it back and uh, it's expensive and cumbersome. And um, uh, one of my partners, Yaron, had a, a successful financial blog uh, that he wanted to translate on a, on a daily basis. And he couldn't find um, a service that uh, uh, will do it professionally and quickly. Now, all of you who think about, ah, there is Google Translate, uh, I recommend, <laughs> this is not the type of translations we, I talk about. Uh, uh, Google Translate is a great tool, you know, to get a general understanding of what a, a simple text is about. Uh, this is not something you would use to, um, you know, answer a bid of the uh, US government or, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, prepare a, an email or a brochure to your customers. Um, and if you don't believe me, take uh, any paragraph from any newspaper, put it into Google Translate, translate it into any other language, and then translate what you receive back uh, to the original language and, and see what happens. Um, so... Uh, we, we saw that there's a, a real uh, a need for, uh, for something uh, like that, and uh, uh, we started working uh, on a one-hour translation. Uh, and the idea, it's really like uh, if you take uh, Amazon and bookstores, uh, that's the, the same concept. In, instead of uh, going to a bookstore to buy your book, uh, you go online to Amazon and it's faster, nicer, quicker, cheaper, etc. Um, uh, or instead of going to a travel agent uh, to buy your uh, airline uh, ticket, uh, you go to Expedia. Th that's uh, the same concept here. Instead of going to a translation agency, uh, you come to one hour translation. Uh, and guess what? Many of the translation agencies in the world, including SDL, which is the second largest, uh, is using a, a one hour translation. Uh, so. Uh, we started this. Um, the nice thing about it is that uh, all you need is a, a computer and uh, a internet connection and uh, uh, someone that knows what to do with that. And uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, partners, Oren, is like a, um, a development guru. 
So he built himself most of the, the initial site. Um, it's true that it's not rocket science, uh, but um, uh, th there's actually a lot of um, a code behind it uh, because we, we manage uh, tens of thousands uh, of translation projects uh, uh, every month now, uh, nearly 50,000 uh, translation projects. Okay, think about it, there's like every minute in the site uh, someone comes, sends something for translation. We have over 10,000 translators in 100 different countries and uh, we need to know what to send, when, where, uh, so it gets translated uh, uh, correctly and quickly and with high quality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, unlike uh, clusters, uh, we don't have um, very, very complex technologies here and, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, we do have a lot of code. And um, uh, we put the, the site up and basically it, start, it started making money uh, from day one. And now, uh, uh, three years uh, uh, into it, uh, we are the, the number one professional translation service uh, online. Uh, we have a lot of competitors, and I wish them all luck and success, but uh, we are number one. Uh, um, and one of the, the leading in the world, uh, especially in, in some parameters like volume and uh, capacity and speed and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and uh, we have a very nice list of uh, customers. Um, Nestle, Google, Toyota, Coca-Cola, the US Army, 3M, Pfizer, Red Bull, uh, Zynga, um, the list uh, uh, goes on uh, in, in many uh, uh, different countries, uh, uh, really uh, many, many uh, thousands of uh, customers, mo most of them businesses, uh, by the way. Uh, many of the people I speak with uh, uh, say, ah, so you translate for students. So actually, the number of students, uh, uh, customers that we have is close to zero. Um, um, and mo most of our customers are businesses, uh, large or small, uh, from uh, really all over the world, uh, including the government of Iraq, uh, for example. Uh, it's V was speaking about uh, you know not emphasizing the fact that uh, Zach was an Israeli company, so uh, we have an office in Cyprus for that. <laughs> Shell, Abu Dhabi, um, uh, companies uh, uh, like that that uh, I use uh, one-hour translation uh, regularly. Um, that's it, basically. Questions. Uh.